What are the other devices? Well, the other devices are your regular temperature and pressure sensors. These give you information at a single point and as a function of time. So these are very useful as well. Now, as far as merits and demerits of experiments are concerned, I think we know it very well. It's high quality. The data is really high quality. Problem is it's low temporal resolution, meaning in certain scenarios, right? For example, if you're studying combustion in a box, then yes, you can get data quite accurately. But what if you're studying combustion in an actual engine, right? Well, you need really, really complex equipment to get high temporal resolution, meaning the data should be quite frequently taken. And the problem with that is you're eventually going to destroy that experiment because if you're putting an optical access, that's what you call as a transparent combustion chamber engine. The idea is the engine is eventually going to uh, get damaged because you're, you're having optical access, which means you have a sapphire glass or something like that. The glass is going, is, is going to break at some point. Setup is very complex. It's not easy to set up these experiments. In fact, pe people spend their entire PhD to just set up the experiments and maybe just take a little bit of data. And usually there are two or three PhD students that actually work on the setup, they take some experiments and then they graduate. And it's prone to errors, right? And that's why it is. it takes as much time as a PhD because you're going to make a lot of mistakes. You need to rectify your mistakes and fix the issues and move on, right? And finally, it's very, very costly, right? As you can imagine. With, C, with IC engine simulations, you know, it's cost effective, meaning you just need computers which are very, very cheap nowadays. You can get very high temporal resolution. You can collect as much data as you want. The requirement or the problem that I see nowadays is the, you need to have highly skilled engineers. What I mean by that is, I'll show you some of the IC engine. Now. I'll show you a simple IC engine setup right now. And you can see that setting it up the right way is actually complex. So you need to have a very good amount of application knowledge and you need to have CFD and combustion expertise. So let's take a look at a live demo. Okay, so here, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open up uh, something called as a port fuel injection engine, right? So this is something that I set up. So I'll be showing it to you and uh, you know, you can understand what's going on here. So this is a production engine, all right? Meaning if you, if you know someone at General Motors or you know, Ford, and if you ask them about IC engine simulation, if you show them this model, they would recognize it. Meaning this is very similar to a model that they are working on, right? It, it is so detailed. For example, if I if I show here, you can see that you can clearly see the spark plug. You can clearly see the valves. All the geometry is quite detailed. So this is a PFI engine, and you can see that that is the provision that we have for the injector. And here, if I hide the space, you can see the detailed uh, uh, flow path that is clearly being captured. And if I enable the edges, you can get some context. Okay, so what does it take to perform an IC engine simulation on this model? First of all, how did I get this model? Well, if you, you know, this is coming from SolidWorks, right? So when we are when you are designing this engine, what we did is we have designed it in such a way that we are taking only the flow volume, right? So what do I mean by that? So for example, if I put it in front of you like this, the actual engine, you know, let us say this is an air cooled engine. It's going to have fins, correct? For all the valves, what you know, you'll basically have a valve block, and for your exhaust, you know, there is going to be an outer like insulation layer, and your tailpipe. It would basically take you to the catalyst. So this is the intake side, so there's no catalyst on the exhaust side. You know, this would basically lead you to, to your tailpipe with with a muffler or whatever, and then finally your type of tailpipe. But here, what we're doing is we are we are not doing any of that, <clears throat> since we're trying to simulate only the fluid inside the port, I'm just modeling only that. That is what you call as a wet volume. What engine is this? Well, this is a four stroke PFI, port fuel injected spark ignited engine. It's a made up engine, but it's made up. But when we made it, we made it quite accurately. Meaning that is why I said this is a production quality engine, meaning that it has all the geometric features of a production production engine that you might encounter in the future. Have you done meshing on the model? Well, this is not meshing. This is just uh, <clears throat> the format is like that. So this is a stereo lithographic model, STL file, which, which basically uh, preserves the geometric feature in terms of triangles. 
So what I've done here is first step is to break up the model. Let me display all the parts into boundaries. So I've taken, I've taken all those triangles and I've grouped them into boundaries so that I can assign boundary conditions because that is what you do in CFD. And then I also assign the initial condition accordingly. So the software that I'm using to do all of this is called as Converge Studio. <coughs> so Converge is a very popular IC engine simulation software. <coughs> and uh, it is something that is being used by pretty much all the OEMs like that you can think of that makes engines. So here, let me just walk you through the setup part here. So the first thing I need to make sure is I need to select my fuel. So in this case, I'm selecting IC8H18, which is gasoline or ISO octane as my fuel species. How do you get boundary condition parameters? I'll, I'll talk about that. So for reaction mechanism, what I'm doing is I'm selecting a particular reaction mechanism, which in this case is called as the job PR of reaction mechanism file. So the mechanism file is basically telling you how the reactions are going to take place depending upon different temperatures and pressure. What is the activation energy required? What is the pre-exponential factor and what is the temperature exponent? So if you know what the Arrhenius rate law is, these are basically the coefficients of Arrhenius rate law. If you don't know what Arrhenius rate law is, don't worry about it. It's, it basically has to deal with how fast a chemical reaction takes place. So I basically give this <clears throat> reaction mechanism and which you can download from websites of universities like UC Berkeley, uh, MIT, uh, Coast University and so on. So I'm using this particular mechanism file and selecting this mechanism file itself is a very, very big step. If you're selecting the wrong mechanism file, if it doesn't match the fuel that you have, you're going to get it wrong. You're going to get wrong results. Then, <clears throat> so simulation parameters, I'm starting this just when the spray starts and I'm running it till exhaust valve opens. I set up my time step parameters. Again, these are all CFD specific uh, time step, the CFL number, which is called as the Quran number. I'm setting up my Quran numbers and um, I'm, I'm, setting up of, I'm setting up a bunch of other parameters that are specific to converge. So then let's talk about boundary conditions, right? So for boundary conditions, what we need to do is, for example, if you take the piston, um, looks like there's a question. So what is CFD? So CFD stands for computational fluid dynamics. It's basically a technique that helps you simulate fluid flow using a computer. Okay. So let's talk about piston and boundary conditions. So in the case of piston, we are basically saying it's a wall boundary and it's a translating wall and the surface movement. We are saying that it's actually a moving surface. All right. Why? Do, and we say that it's, it follows piston motion. When I select this option, the converge software is going to be um, using a slider crank mechanism in the background and it's going to run the entire simulation automatically. Neither of us, is it different from star CCM? Yes, it is different. Uh, so converge is basically, if you can think of that as, uh, you know, star CCM was like the Blackberry, you know, and it was like the Blackberry in simulation tools and then iPhone kind of replaced it, right? So star CCM was like that. It was a very popular tool. It was being used like in all the, in, in all the companies, but Converge came in and they, and they replaced pretty much everyone. Like that's why I'm saying any OEM company, any company that makes engines is using Converge nowadays for simulating IC engines. And that is why star CCM, right? The parent company called CD Adapco is no longer there. It got sold to Siemens, correct? I'm not sure if you've heard of that. Okay, <clears throat> so um, so that's basically it. So here we are setting up the piston motion. Uh, looks like we have a question from Himanshu. Is the simulation possible in ANSYS Fluent? It would take you several months to do this. In uh, we basically did this entire simulation, including post processing, in 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 a week. If you try this simulation in ANSYS Fluent, you are going to be spending at least three months.